Okay, there we go. All right, so let's run it down. The Tucson Bay Area game just ended. Oh my goodness. Tucson really was down, what, 16 nothing. Came back, won the game. That's how we that's how that's how they do it. That's how they do it. Let's start with the NAL though. Let's start with the NAL. Um, in all honesty, we had two great games this weekend. San Antonio beating Jacksonville in overtime 63-62. And then, you know, Carolina beating West Texas with, you know, with a crazy last sequence, 64-62. And then Albany, of course, you know, again, a lot of drama with Albany right now. Like they got Maurice Leggett, um, a rateable champion, and I think he got hurt during the latter portion of that game. They also lost to Vinny Testaverde Jr. to the XFL. But I think it's all right because, you know, Sam Cash, Donova, and company, Darius Prince, you know, again, <laughs> the Empire took care of business. There's two Albany Twitters. For some reason, one of them is unofficial. The other is official. I don't know what's going on, but it's all right. Um, a lot of other observations, you know, that's besides the point about, you know, the Empire and AB and stuff like that. You know, West Texas, they may be a little bit more competitive than we thought they would be. And these Nets, oh, these Nets, very, you know, now that I have a better look at them, cheap cheap as hell let me tell you um it seems like the refs don't know the rules like even chris siegfried had to come down and say hey hey what y'all doing down there y'all doing the wrong stuff down there fix it real quick and then you know the games themselves you know still the big issue that's been plaguing the nal that nobody talks about <laughs> that i've been talking about for like two seasons now is that games are taking way too long. You know, you should not be approaching a, the length of a college football game. It's, it's uh, you know, San Antonio Jacksonville took like three hours and 45 minutes. You shouldn't be, you should, you shouldn't be approaching that length. You know, if I go attend an NAL game, I should be out of there and, you know, I should be in there at like, I don't know, you know, games usually start at like 7 Eastern, so 6 p.m. my time. So I'm going to be in there at like 5.30. I'm expected to be out of that joker at maybe, I don't know, you know, uh, 9.45, 10 o'clock Eastern. That's, you know, you know, that's like 8.45. Instead, nah. <laughs> I wonder, I, you know, I really wonder sometimes. I really wonder. You, you look at the top of the standings, it's so weird. You have the Gunslingers at 2-0. and Albany, of course, 1-0, and but they just started playing, you know, again. 17 league and everything like that. And then West Texas, Orlando, both, both terrible. No, I'm just kidding. You know, it's just Orlando, really. It's probably not that good. West Texas, again, can't compete. It's Orlando that might be the weak link in the league so far. That's just my observation of things. In the IFL, well, Jonathan Bain, he's an Iowa barn store. He's even been in the chats and stuff like that. So, you know, he's watching. He's watching. And then Tulsa named their field after a weed company, Country Cannabis. Their field looks nice. I'll say that for Tulsa. They have... A pretty, pretty decent crowd size. Like, what, over is like 7,000 went to that Tulsa home opener? I don't know what the IFL is announcing on Monday, but we'll see what it is. I'll talk about it next week because there's just no time to talk about it tonight. And then you look at the standings. Yeah, that kind of messed things up, but uh, I had to copy and paste a little bit. But Tucson, 3-0 and atop. The West, Frisco 4 0 atop the East. Again, Green Bay finally beat Sioux Falls again, which is saying a lot about Sioux Falls. It says a lot more about Sioux Falls than it does about Green Bay. Green Bay, 
Again, like I said, Green Bay can't hold their own. The question is about Sioux Falls and Iowa. God, Iowa's, Iowa's not good. But maybe Bain can change that. Maybe Bain can change the Barnstormers. We'll see. And then, of course, you know, the West, San Diego is god-awful. How do you only score, what, eight, nine points? Yeah. Terrible, terrible performance by the Strike Force. And then the CIF, the Champions Indoor Football League, yeah, they're calling themselves the CIFL now. And that's just based off of looking at their website. Like, they're just really calling themselves the CIFL now. And unless Rapid City and Topeka can find a way to win some games, these playoffs are looking very much set. Again, remember, CIF has the top six. Omaha and Gillette have clinched already. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Omaha's played only five games. They've clinched a playoff spot. I know. That's just the nature of the CIF schedules. Just the nature of playing only 10 games. Every game counts. And in the AWFC, a lot happened over you know, the past couple of weeks that I've been following and keeping track of. Um, yeah, you see Idaho beat up on the Cali Gold and Wenatchee beat up on the Las Vegas Kings. Idaho put up over 100 on the gold and then, you know, Wenatchee Valley, you know, beat up on Las Vegas, who made it a little bit more respectable, kind of, not really. But again, the AIFA is a total crapshoot, and we don't know what in the world's going to happen, you know, with the league at, as it stands. But Wenatchee Valley was smart enough to replace those clashes you know, that there were supposed to be two games against the AIFA, you know, other teams, not the, not the Las Vegas Kings, talk of other teams, the AIFA. Um, so the Spokane Wolfpack and the Sin City Govs, who took on the Oregon High Desert Storm in the AWFC opener, they added those two games, and there's just one game left that needs to be replaced, and that is the Idaho Capital City game, because I don't think, you, come on. This is Alton Walker we're talking about here. Do you really think he's going to travel up to Idaho? I doubt it. And in the AFL, Tim Capper, Lee Hutton the third, they had a big time conversation that you know is rocking the indoor arena world right now. We'll see. You know if these things are going to possibly happen. There are, I have a bunch of question marks about Jacksonville, Phoenix. Are these things going to happen with those two franchises? Are, is it, are the Sharks and the Rattlers going to move? I don't think so, but we'll see because you never know. And there's, you know, uniforms they've been decided on. We don't know who the provider is. And a $700,000 salary cap, so... We'll see what kind of AFL we're going to see with two conferences, four divisions, four teams in each division. So, you know, New Orleans looks like it's a lock. The Philadelphia Soul, of course, also a lock. But there's some other cities. It could be Mexico City. could be a team up in Washington State, California, Illinois, a couple teams in Texas and Oklahoma, Utah. Maybe Minneapolis, Minnesota, and also St. Louis. I think there were some others listed, but those are the ones that I caught from the top of my head. But I don't know. Hard to gauge. The, you know, the AFL said, so T-minus 60 days. It's been a few days since that interview, so, you know, maybe, like, we're still about two months away from whatever the AFL 3.0 is going to announce. And a lot of doubts are still circulating. Is the league going to play? We don't know. Until we can get something in those 60 days, I can't say nothing about it. The Great Lakes Alina Alliance, uh, yeah. Those 
Battle Creek, South Michigan, and the Ohio West Michigan games. Those did not happen today. They were supposed to happen, but as far as I can tell, they did not happen. So don't even worry about it. I even checked Battle Creek's website. They got themselves a new Facebook page, new website. That game they were supposed to have against South Michigan did not happen. And there have been games without refs, which I found out, which is insanity to me. And in Chicago Power, they've been mostly removed from the GLA website. They've just been announcing player signings and stuff like that over the past few weeks and nothing really concrete. So I don't even know if they're going to play this year. Like they had a schedule, but, you know, time has passed. So they haven't played yet. And then the other stuff, you know, the Arena League, uh, which people were wondering about in YouTube, in the YouTube chats for some of the games. Um, I believe it was Duluth, Minnesota that got a team, if I'm not mistaken. And then the AAL, too, they kicked off. Um, they kicked off this weekend. So if you watch Steel City and the Jersey Bearcats, that might have been the only game that got streamed, but the scores are right there. For you all to see, and Steel City Jersey probably was the best game out of the bunch. And I even checked the, I even looked at the at the live stream a little bit. It was all right. It was all right. Uh, the arena really isn't probably an arena, but it is what it is. It's fine. So yeah, there's that. I've got nothing else really truly to say here. So we're going to cap off this night and get ready for next weekend. Another Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, smorgasbord of indoor arena football. I'll, I'll tell you that much. I'm ready for it. And are you ready for it? We'll find out. We'll find out if you are because I'll see y'all next Sunday night.